Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining us today for this webinar titled Seating and Interior Trim, Develop, Cut, and Optimize with Digital Processes to Produce a World-Class Interior at a Lower Cost. Brought to you by Automotive Design and Production Magazine and presented by Electra and Tachi S. My name is Michael Anderson, and I'm the Senior Technical Editor of Automotive Design and Production Magazine. Today's webinar will focus on sharing transformative technologies that use digital processes and Industry 4.0 to enable global teams to design and manufacture world-class class interiors while driving costs down. The presentation will last oh, somewhere about 45 minutes, followed by a question and answer period. If you have a question, you can type it at any time during the webinar in the question field of your GoToWebinar control panel. This webinar is being recorded, and when complete, it will be made available to you via email from Automotive Design and Production. The presentation will also be made available by our presenters via email request. Contact information for our presenters will be provided at the end of the webinar. And our presenters today are Jim Collins, who is the VP of Automotive at Electra North America. Over the past 30 years, Jim has held key roles in the marine industry for about a decade, and then he moved on to the automotive industry, including nine years at Electra. And with Jim, in Detroit today, is Graham Stewart. He's the Senior Director of Engineering and New Business Development Engineering at Tachi S Engineering USA Incorporated. And Graham has over 30 years of seating experience and has led multiple seating programs for OEMs, including Acura, Daimler, Freightliner, Honda, Infinity, and Nissan. So that's quite a resume. So, Jim and Graham, I'm going to turn it over to you now, and we look forward to seeing what you have to share with us today. Well, thanks, Mike. Uh, this is Jim Collins. Um, first of all, I'd like to let you know who Lecture is, if you don't know. We're the global market leader in uh, digital cutting room technology. Uh, we have three um, markets that we're very heavily uh, in right now, being fashion, furniture, and automotive. Automotive, uh, particularly seating, happens to be our largest and fastest growing industry that we serve. Uh, inside the automotive market, we serve three, we, three primary segments, the seating and interior trim, automotive leather, and automotive airbag, and we have solutions and suites of products to handle each of these challenges. Okay, um, Jim, I'm going to introduce Tachi S just briefly. Um, I know, obviously, uh, a lot of people in this webinar and a lot of people in the industry in general uh, don't hear about Tachi S all that often, being that we're a uh, tier one supplier, so we're kind of behind the OEM nameplate. And so I just want to do a quick introduction. Touch Years Company Limited uh, is a global supplier. We've been in the business for 64 years. Um, we have about 2.7 billion in global sales, uh, about 80 million in capital, about 13,000 employees, just under 13,000 employees. And the company is traded on the Tokyo Stock Exchange first section. Uh, Touch Years Engineering USA is a wholly owned subsidiary in Detroit where we do design, development, testing, and, um, and prototyping. And in this uh, facility here, we've been here approximately uh, 30, 32 years in uh, Michigan. So uh, I'll go to the next slide. <laughs> um, talking a little bit about our global footprint, um, this map represents where we are in the, uh, in the global arena. And on the bottom of this uh, slide is a, uh, a grouping of some of our customers. So as I mentioned, uh, we are uh, behind the OEM nameplate. You don't see us as a tier one supplier, um, but we do supply complete seat systems for Honda, Nissan, Toyota, Mitsubishi, Hino, Daimler, Renault, uh, Isuzu, Geely, Cherry, and UD trucks. So in 2019, seven of the best interiors uh, that were awarded at the uh, Awards Auto Seminar were actually made with Lectra. Uh, of these, Tachi S was uh, honored with an award for the Nissan Kicks. 
Yeah, so again, uh, obviously we design, develop, uh, and uh, manufacture these interiors, uh, obviously closely guided by the OEMs uh, with their input for obviously overall styling and, and appearance, and, and then the craftsmanship is where we really have to um, do our job. And of course, having a partner like Electra enables us to um, develop the uh, seating system from that concept that's provided by the customer to the uh, finished product that ends up in the uh, in the customer's vehicle. And as uh, mentioned, obviously Electra, uh, their equipment is widely used in the industry. So seven of the ten interiors were was cut on their equipment or or utilized various. Uh, Parts of their equipment suite to and the industry 4.0 suite to to be achieved at these awards, and then of course I uh, my company of course directly had their hands on the Nissan Kicks seat itself, uh, in that we developed that and manufactured that in one of our facilities. So our focus is on uh, digitalization and risk, man risk management, which equals performance. So. Our goal is to align your operations uh, with your initiatives to give you operational excellence, uh, a higher OEE level on your equipment, uh, lower maintenance, lower cost of maintenance, uh, and overall uptime that's 90% uh, or higher. Uh, predictive and analytics that should allow you to see what's happening to your, to your cutting machines prior to them having a malfunction, be able to work around that rather than having the the old metric where the machine breaks and you go into a series of calling call centers and, and having people dispatched. Uh, all of this lets you uh, manage the risk you have in order to run a very high performance cutting room in order to meet your, your delivery schedule. So our digital acceleration uh, all happens by the technology that we're embedding into our systems now to allow you to have a much uh, better performer, greater performing system on your floor. Yeah, I mean, just to add to this, obviously, the the, the manifestation of, of risk management equals performance is that you get uh, your product out there and it looks good and it gets to market on time uh, and you don't have any uh, any downtime or issues. So, again, the awards, awards are the ultimate manifestation of you've done your job correctly and you've got a quality product out to the customer um, and then they've got their quality product out to their customers. So uh, this is where we've excelled in, in what we do by using Lectra's equipment and having Lectra as a partner. We got that product out there and it looks fantastic and the, and the industry has appreciated it for its excellence. So at Lectra, we're leading the way in this industry in the industry 4.0 and digital acceleration. So what we're doing is looking at uh, lean management uh, factors uh, and embedding them as well as industry 4.0 KPIs into all of our suite of, of products so that you can actually use the data that these, these uh, solutions generate to, um, to move your business faster and to get things done better. whole thing is around the, the, the smart factory and how we can have machines that are operating at a much higher level and you have uh, insight into what's going on in each system, as well as a really nice collection of the data, and then be able to use that data to actually drive your system better. So the, these are integral for businesses to face the market challenges, which we currently see as a, a demand for more personalization, uh, changing mobility habits, particularly in the uh, autonomous vehicle range, uh, interiors as differentiators between product lines, uh, the need for uh, digital integrated experience uh, in the shopping world in order to purchase, uh, competition among the different suppliers, uh, greater production complexity uh, as the interiors get more and more enhanced that they're more difficult to create and build, and also to optimize cost and reduce some of the cost pressure that everybody feels in uh, going to market. So Lectra's strategy is uh, basically to empower customers like we did Tachi S uh, through digitalization as a step into a, as a first step into Industry 4.0. Uh, we're able to give them uh, not only high-performing equipment but also dashboards so they can monitor and see what's going on 
on their floor wherever they are around the world. So we're looking at uh, a more flexible system where people can actually take that data and use it to manage the, the entire production system and not just have to react to it down the line. So the uh, market challenges uh, that we have found are um, uh, everybody needs quicker deliveries, there's pressure on prices, there's an increasing demand for customization and diversity, uh, as well as higher quality standards. So we've also uh, put that together with the goals of reducing time to market, uh, anticipating and reducing costs to increase margins, increase efficiency in manufacturing with more flexible tools, uh, and increase product quality. We're always um, using these. Uh, it's great to be able to cut faster, but we want to maintain a certain quality level that people expect. Uh, and the actions that we're taking are for to help manufacturing processes through optimization and flexibility, uh, upgrade cutting solutions, uh, design and product development for better cost management, and workforce enablement. If I could just add there too, Jim. Um, so a perfectly good example of reducing the time to market is we have uh, in-house uh, one of Lectra's products, which is their digital patent tuning product. And that enables us to uh, cut out some of the more traditional pattern tuning steps during the development phase, whereby we are able to go directly to digital patterns from a digital uh, media of the seat uh, of the seat's outline. So we take a, a soft trim outline or an STO of the seat, which is digital, and go from that directly to our first set of patterns. So that's another perfect example of um, reducing time to market and also increasing accuracy for that first set of patterns that are created off of a digital uh, methodology as opposed to more traditional cut and sew type methodology. Great. So uh, other areas where obviously we uh, see performance optimization and the results of that performance optimization is that we see these reductions in time to market of anywhere between 20 to 50%. We also see uh, the reduction of the cost of quality by reducing uh, your uh, your quality um, snafus or your uh, reworks or uh, your scrap or your waste uh, by anywhere between 10 to 20 percent. And then another area of optimization is a 30 to 50 percent reduction of total machine downtime. Uh, this is where obviously a broken machine or a failed machine sitting idle in the corner is of no use to anyone. So uh, having the uh, 4.0, Industry 4.0, the maintenance predictability provided by Electra's software package, the uh, potential failure areas of the machine where it's predicted maintenance or predicted failure, these kinds of, uh, of tools are very useful for reducing that possible downtime. And as an add-on to that, now we're currently fixing uh, over 90% of our issues with cutting machines now through that smart services connection without having to send any um, uh, field technicians out to uh, the machines at all. So that, that the, the predictability is one thing, but the able to diagnose and fix over the, uh, over the secure connection is uh, wonderful. Uh, do you want to start on this? Or? Sure. Go ahead. So again, as I mentioned, in the uh, in this slide deals with styling prototype and the purchasing needs. So again, once uh, one of the uh, things that I mentioned is we get a uh, styling image or a styling concept, which is usually dictated by the OEM or the customer. And then in this case, we have to uh, uh, create the take that styling essence and put it into a manufacturable. Uh, product that meets your uh, cost targets and your uh, your quality targets. And so using the uh, pattern tuning design software, which is available through Lectra, that enables us to uh, make those prototypes and go from that digital realm into the physical realm uh, in, a, uh, in a purely digital manner as opposed to a physical manner or a, a physical manifestation in the form of multiple prototypes or multiple pattern tuning events. So this is a, a very good uh, tool, and that also closes the, the for industry 4.0 type approach to things where you're purely digital as opposed to 
um, mechanical or physical properties. The other thing that that software enables us to do is enables us the ability to play with different materials uh, within the digital realm and uh, play with uh, those materials in a digital form without having to do, again, cut and sew uh, prototypes. Uh, the other, and that gives you that versatility or that uh, uh, that brand recognition, and it also gives you a little bit of a leg up in that you can take the material specified by the customer, but you can also play around in that digital realm by substituting different materials and then potentially offering uh, those alternatives to the customer, and again optimizing your uh, utilization, optimizing your time to market, optimizing the amount of prototype steps it takes or the amount of patent tuning steps it takes from uh, digital to physical. Great. Um, this is, uh, a, a, again, more on the virtual prototyping aspect and the digital aspect of what we do. So um, obviously the end goal is an interior and in our case, the seating aspect of the interior and uh, again, we are trying to take that customer's image of styling and 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 design theme, and then make a hundred thousand of them, uh, and they all want to be exactly the same and of the same quality level. So, getting from that that physical themed design to the um, the actual product that's being mass produced, uh, and having that same level of quality, that same level of precision, that same level of of uh, of expectation that the customer has for you every time repeated. Uh, it, there's really uh, a lot of the tools that Lectra have give us the ability to do that. And again, the obviously prototyping, design development, and pre-production, those are all the, the areas that we touch on right up to that point of pre-production where we hand it off to our plant and say, now you need to make 100,000 of these. And we take it from there as well, e even further into uh, the high volume cutting systems that can take, uh, you know, anything from, you know, one one ply of material into uh, four, 40 or 50. So one of the major advantages Lecture offers to their customers is the integrated processes that we have that we offer for our different solutions. This slide basically works around uh, our Versalis leather cutting suite of products, which is a uh, full hide leather cutting machine, but it also has, a, if for the prototyping, you can see the design concept 3D, where we're able to import the 3D file, we can put different materials on, we can stress map, we can move seams around so you can see where the load bearing of the seams, where it needs to be changed, where it's going to wear. We can instantly uh, flatten that down to flat patterns and do costing. Uh, we can move that then to the 2D side with our Formaris product, which was used for uh, nesting and costing to see uh, how much uh, material you're going to need for each seat. Uh, you can industrialize those patterns too by adding notches or holes for, for controls, whatever you need, and then actually save master patterns as well. You can print them off on mylars from there if they need to be checked. From there, it goes to our leather machine, which is called the Versalis. This is available in several different uh, um, varieties uh, for automotive, anywhere from a single head to three heads, depending on the size of parts you need to cut. Uh, it, it does do uh, full hide scanning, full um, mapping of the flaws, nesting right on, right on the machine, and then it cuts the parts out and transfers them to a takeoff area that has a really nice um, identification system where your operators can see what part they're picking and, and easily identify where it needs to go. And then built into that now is, an, is a leather reporting system, which is able to hook into your ERP system to, to connect with uh, your, your production control. You can also provide, uh, create your own performance indicators for the machine. You can also track what's going to the machine in terms of uh, Yield of the hide, size of the hide, flaw area, part area, all that kind of all that kind of information. Uh, so it uh, the whole process is designed to really improve the yield you use, get more more good parts out of the hide you use by and anywhere from five to fifteen percent, depending on the program and the size of the pieces. Um, 
Okay. If I could just touch on uh, two points, yeah. So obviously in my facility here in Michigan, my main focus is on the first two areas, the prototyping and the product development where we use uh, the design concept 3D and 2D software provided by Electra. Of course, uh, that's my main focus. However, I will say too that in the manufacturing and optimization side of things, my plants around the world, again, that's, their, um, that's within their wheelhouse, but they obviously use uh, Electra's uh, equipment there also and, and benefit from these same um, methodologies and optimizations uh, at the manufacturing sites that we own around the world. And these same processes hold true through our fabric, man fabric cutting systems, our airbag cutting systems. Uh, each suite of products has uh, a fully integrated process from start to finish. <laughs> um, virtual prototyping and simulation, I've kind of already touched on this a little bit uh, in, uh, in the previous uh, discussion points while we were talking. So uh, again, in the previous slide, I, I mentioned that in this facility, we primarily do the prototyping or the development app, uh, work of developing the uh, product from concept to mass producible ready design. So. The tools we use for that is, again, the, uh, the 3D software that Lectra provides, the design uh, concept 3D and 2D. And of course, as I mentioned, these are a couple of the steps where we go from an STO or soft trim outline. Um, we also use the uh, mechanical frame in order to determine our attachment points. And then our foam is a, uh, a three-dimensional model also. And once you have all of that uh, necessary base geometry and, and data, you can then apply the digital seat cover development software and, uh, and do the, uh, the virtual development of that first set of patterns, uh, which is a great time savings. And what's nice about that too is we can have, we can display multiple iterations of that seat design with multiple materials, multiple patterns, um, different seams, different, seam, different uh, seaming types, different sewing machine types. Uh, so that you can have uh, your your design review could be completely digital, and you could see 20 to 30 different si different uh, iterations of that product without ever having to cut a single sample. And I'd just like to add also, so uh, Lecter is a great partner in this regard. Um, when you're doing that development, uh, obviously any software or any uh, methodology is only as good as the data you input into it. And this is where Electra is an absolutely fantastic partner in that um, they will train you, they will not only train you, they will also work with you as you develop your own methodology and they will help you tailor those inputs to the point where you're getting highly accurate results. So I think we've touched on most of these benefits uh, in the last couple of slides, but maybe you would hit the big yeah. high points. Yeah, so obviously, um, uh, time from RFI or RFQ to response to the OEM or the customer, uh, that's, a, that's a big plus when you, you're able to do it digitally versus uh, mechanically or physically. Um, the cost saving in materials is also quite good, obviously, because you're, uh, you're not doing those multiple iterations and you're cutting highly accurate patterns in the, in the first go round. And then, of course, you can uh, get into later, um, uh, later benefits uh, with your process improvement and then also going directly uh, from the, the other thing we're able to do is send those patterns directly down to our manufacturing location and we can either nest them here or they can nest them down there and we can very quickly have um, highly accurate uh, cut files generated. So the next step in this whole um, uh, evolution for, uh, for the way Lecter is going into this technology is to uh, use data to drive the production. So in the, in the past, this was all done kind of through networks or it was all offline of the main, the main system. So nothing was really connected. So what we're doing now with the Industry 4.0 uh, is, is to connect everything electronically. So in the case of our leather machine, we're now able to use leather import to import work orders directly from clients' uh, ERP or MES systems. So we don't have to use an outside spreadsheet or 
some kind of outside tool that, that has to be done in between making the work or creating the work order and then getting it to the machine. So we can, we can do that so it's all seamless from the time that the, uh, the work gets put into the ERP system. The other side of it is that with the reporting back from the machine, allowing customers to create their own KPIs so that they are, they're actually using measurements from their production floor that are meaningful to them rather than us creating a, a set set of KPIs that, that they need to use. So we're, we're actually working more hand in hand with the, our, our customers now so that with the, all the data that these machines produce, they can actually take it out, peel it apart and use it the way they want. And that just moves, uh, moves everything better into the cutting line. And then in there, what we have is a fully connected machine, which is connected uh, via a secure connection to our call center so that we can monitor what's going on at the machine and we can actually send out alerts ahead of uh, faults being, being made so we can prevent the machine from going down rather than having the old metric where the machine breaks, you call in, we send a guy, we send parts, all that kind of stuff. So we can maintain the uptime and the availability of that machine and in turn create a much higher OEE score for that machine. So the benefit is down the line, you'll use less equipment to do more work. So then this is just another uh, slide about the, in particular, the Versalis cutting. So uh, it's, it's a complete system that has cut preparation, uh, preparation, it has nesting, it has cutting, it has offloading, and then it has optimizing. The, the actual system looks at what's going through it and then makes recommendations for how to optimize those uh, that workflow so that it becomes faster. And then on the, on the, that's on the hardware side. And on the software side, we have uh, leather import to bring the work orders into the system seamlessly from the ERP system. We have uh, advanced leather scanning for the, uh, looking at flaws and quality zones. Uh, we have advanced nesting and advanced algorithms to get more yield per hide. We're actually being, uh, see a, a one or two percent increase in yield almost every time we do a new uh, update on software. And then we have a Versalis Pilot, which is the, the software that drives the machine. This is very intuitive, very easy to use. So we don't have to have somebody who's slave to the computer watching it. As soon as they start the, the process, they can walk away and start to uh, work with the, with the output of the machine, which is what takes most of the time. And then on the offload side, we've created a very sophisticated system that, that color codes the parts so that as the parts are coming off cut, they're color coded, the operator can see the, the blue part, put it in the blue bin, the green part, put it in the green, green bin, so it becomes very fast. The main hiccup of any of these machines is not in the cutting time, it's in the nesting time and it's in the offload time. So we need to get those processes optimized out of the way and through our advanced software and some of the industry 4.0 items we put in there, we're able to do that much faster. So all of that offers basically all the advantages I said before. It's high speed, it's flexible, uh, and it's high performance. Uh, as I said before, we have one, two, or three heads, depending on the size of the parts. If you're doing small steering wheel parts, which are very small, a three-head machine will cut them faster than if you were doing uh, uh, larger parts like backs or, or bolsters. So. Uh, they're very high precision on the scanning. We use, uh, we do not use cameras. We use a, a, uh, a scanning device, a high resolution scanner, which is, gives you a way better picture than using a standard digital camera. Um, that's about it, really. You said everything. So on the fabric side, we also use several of these tools to maximize yield for the nesting of uh, flat fabric. So. We've uh, added more um, algorithms into our nesting, especially our automatic nesting, and then have uh, adjusted the machines and the capability machines to cut uh, more, to, uh, more materials, especially the harder materials to cut on a standard cutting machines, the Alcantara, the fabrics, the vinyls, foams, and so forth. Yeah, I can't really speak too much to this side. As I mentioned before, this is mainly the manufacturing side. Of course, the photograph uh, included in this slide is one of our manufacturing facilities uh, that does, again, utilize uh, this equipment. So uh, from that standpoint, um, that's about all I have to say on that. <laughs> <laughs> 
So uh, the benefits of uh, digitalization of the complete uh, supply chain. Uh, Graham, you probably know, you're seeing this firsthand. Yeah, so I'm seeing this firsthand, and I think as I mentioned in the beginning and in a previous slide was some of the flexibility. So, of course, uh, the flexibility of, uh, of visualizing the, the trim covers during that development phase when you're developing those patterns. Not only can you change the materials and, and, and view them uh, differently, you can also change the sew lines and, and move things around and give the uh, customer some different options. Uh, but not only is that driven by uh, trying to please the, the customer and giving them alternatives, it's also been driven by um, the software, which is telling you, hey, if you move the seam, you get better utilization, or if you move the seam, you get uh, a, a better, you're going to get a better quality product because it, it, uh, it's going to be a better um, fit for the pattern. So that's where we see some of the flexibility translating into a better, uh, better response to the customer and better quality down the line. Um, and again, then time savings is always a huge issue. Um, so eliminating some of those prototype steps and some of those manual methodologies of getting from A to B, that's always uh, a plus. And uh, a lot of the new uh, customers, I mean, we're getting into an age now where it's no longer the Fords and it's no longer the GMs and it's no longer these. We've got all these startup companies. We've got all these EV companies emerging. And uh, a lot of these newer companies that are Silicon Valley based, they're coming in and they don't understand the old methodology. They don't know what pattern to man, manual pattern tuning is. Exactly. They've never seen that. Um, they're, they're not from the furniture industry or from the fashion industry or these other industries where, where you hang leather on a mannequin and do it the old fashioned way. So they say they come in with this old digital mindset and they want to know what digital methodologies you have um, and they don't understand these older methodologies and these older uh, types of uh, traditional method. Right. So when you can show them that you have a digital process or you have a digital methodology, they can uh, they key right in on that immediately. So it's opening up doors to uh, to these new pl new players and newcomers in the industry sure. that are not used to the old methodologies and traditional ways of doing things. And that's where it's key to, to collect the data that goes through the system and then leverage it into uh, how to perform, how to, how to do, do high performance manufacturing for, those, for your other customers. So you'll have the experience uh, to, to do it, but you can actually show them because of the data that it's been done. Well, yeah, the, the new IATF and the new ISO standards are very metrics driven and very, uh, very um, do what you say what you do, but record it and, mm -hmm. and have evidence of it and then have your KPIs and your metrics. So this lends itself into that too, where you can really get a handle on a wider range of metrics to measure nowadays. Absolutely. So Tachi S and Lecter, let's talk about our experience together. <laughs> yeah, so obviously our challenges are the same as anyone in the automotive industry, uh, uh, cost reduction, uh, efficiency increases, uh, time to market and quality. So. Uh, all of these uh, things are are in the relationship that we have, and uh, obviously, uh, how how does that manifest itself in the end? Well, it manifests itself with JD Power. It manifests itself with uh, Wards Automotive Awards. It manifests itself with customer awards from the customer for quality or for delivery or for whatever other metric they're measuring and giving out awards for. And so our facilities, that's our goal, is to achieve those awards and that recognition in the industry, sure. and obviously we're doing it. And at the same time, and the productivity was increased was really nice. We, we were able to improve uh, on three of the more expensive materials, and uh, the efficiency of the equipment rose dramatically from 56 to 72 percent. So the whole system seems to be running much better. So as, uh, as to paraphrase, Mr. Luis Sora, our uh, senior corporate purchasing manager down in one of our plants in Mexico, in this case, uh, I'll read uh, exactly his quote. Uh, in addition to our reduction in cost per set, the project has helped us improve the quality of our products and the delivery times in our development of the new platforms required by the customer. Excellent. So we have an upcoming event in October, the Automotive Interior Expo. Lecture will be there together with Tachi S, another partner of ours, Dirkhoff Adler, uh, to Novi, Michigan. We will, we will not have any machines installed, but we will have uh, lots of things to, to show you if, if you come to that uh, exhibition. 
Yeah, so uh, swing on by and uh, say hello to us, and uh, it would be nice to put some faces to some names from uh, the webinar. So thanks for your uh, attention. We'll take some questions now, if there are already. Okay. Great, great. Wow, this is this is fascinating. I'll tell you, man, things have changed. Uh, it's really, really interesting to see how the digital world is, uh, uh, is, is on us now. Uh, very interesting. We did get a few questions, gentlemen. So uh, I'll I'll uh, I'll kick off with this one, uh, and you can fight over who gets to answer them. Uh, you mentioned you mentioned OESA. The questioner asks. There seems to be a consistent set of priorities the OEM discusses at at town hall events. So how does Lexa support these initiatives? Well, we work hand in hand with the with the companies we supply, and, and they tell us what their initiatives are, and we help them try to make whatever uh, whatever demands are being put upon them by their by their customers. So we, I guess, the short answer is that we just work uh, very closely. We have a very close relationship with almost all of our automotive partners, and uh, handle it that way. Okay. Uh, okay. Another one. Uh, this goes back to this transformation to digital. The question is, how do you help global customers to transform from die press to digital? Well, it's a, it's, a, it's kind of a long process, but what we would do is, is do a uh, an audit of their current production of how they're doing things now, focusing on uh, a couple of key areas for cost uh, at, um, a reduction, which would be mostly labor and hard tooling and fabric uh, utilization. So we might take uh, an entire program and then uh, do an audit of how they're running it their way right now and then uh, make a full digital model of that program so they can see a direct comparison of what the uh, digital output is from it as opposed to the to the current output. And then we would marry that up with a uh, a proposal to them of uh, how many how many machines it may take to to meet that output, what type of machines. We have a whole suite of, of cutting systems, so it's not a one size fits all proposition. So we would put that together, and we would we have a couple of industry experts that work with us as well, and we would say, you know, this is how you're doing it now, but to be world class, first in class, in a real lean environment, this is what we would recommend, and they would see what the uh, what the cost difference is. I think also for us uh, on our manufacturing side and what I've seen also in our manufacturing side, uh, when you're die cutting and specifically in this case of die cutting leather, the criteria by which the leather is selected is reliant on the operator. If you have a newer technology like scanning and the accuracy of the scanning is improved over the subjective criteria that an operator would choose, you can also get better results on your leather cutting when you're die cutting because you've taken that subjectiveness of the operator and the factors of light in the plant, for instance, where the operator is working, you've taken that out of the equation and it's a, a much more uh, objective methodology. One of the other areas that we focus on very heavily at Lectra is the change management between the two systems as well. Because it's 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 not enough to just drop a machine on somebody's floor and say here you go. There's a whole uh, change that has to happen, an, an evolution in that plant, if you will, of, of from going from one technology to the other. That needs to be monitored. It needs to be uh, the workflow needs to be talked through with people who've done it before in order to make it go as quick as possible and to actually capture all those savings that we're saying are potential. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. So, so it, 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 it yeah, it, it sounds like you have a a, a lot of experience uh, of, of having to walk people into what the uh, uh, how, how to go from from the from uh, the old way to the digital way. Uh, now, the, so the, the next question that I got here kind of asks. Uh, so, and and I, I'm 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 injecting myself into the into the question here because it I I think it's it's interesting. Uh, I, do you do you still find that you have to make the case to people for uh, uh, 
uh, making the move to digital. Is is that still a thing anymore? And if that's the case, then like if, if you had to, if you had someone in an elevator and wanted to to talk about the benefits of of digital over over the old way, what would be at the top of that list? Well, cost is always king, so it's always uh, two two main factors is the a, a major reduction in cost by going from one to the other, even when the cost of the new equipment is factored in. The other is time to market and changes. It's very difficult to change pieces in a die cut operation because you have to put everything on hold and wait for that die or that die board to, to be changed. Whereas if somebody makes a, a revision to a part that goes into a seat uh, digitally, we can actually be cutting that within minutes of it being made. So. I would say the two the two major things we focus on would be the, the cost reduction and then the speed. Okay. Uh, all right. There's, there's one uh, one more question here. Uh, people listening, it's not too late to type in a question because we it looks like we still have all kinds of time. Uh, but another question that that has appeared here is, uh, what would you say is better for Lectra? AccuMark or Optitex? We can take either one. Doesn't matter. Okay, you're you're agnostic on these. Yes, the, both okay. both systems will export a DXF file, and we're able to take that. Uh, no problem. Okay, great, great. Uh, I I should uh, uh, let's see. Okay, here another question just popped up. Thank you. Uh, how long? is the training you give for Design 2D? For the, on the software? Yeah. Oh, well, we have different, that, that software is modular, so there's different modules within it, but a typical module takes anywhere from four to eight days to really learn. Um, we teach it in a one-on-one -on -one setting, generally not in a classroom. So uh, the nice thing about the automotive uh, business is that you have a much higher level of engineer than you do in some of the other businesses that uh, that we're in. So it's usually adopted very fast, especially if they're using some of the other tools that are out there, the CATIAs or SolidWorks or Alias or something like that. It's, it's, it's not that difficult to grab hold of. Okay. Another one popped up, uh, and I'm, I'm trying to, to parse it exactly. But it sounds like the question is, is something like if you have existing uh, CAD experience, computer design, uh, how how uh, what what is the uh, how easy to use? What is the ease of use concerns for the uh, design concept 3D and or the 2D? So in other words, I, I think that what the person is asking is how how easy or difficult is this to use if you already have CAD experience? It's very easy. It, it, that that helps out a great deal in the training, and uh, it's very intuitive, and it's it's parametric as well, so you don't have to jump from screen to screen. So it's uh, if you have any kind of uh, CAD, even AutoCAD training or whatever, it's very simple to use. This this is this is a question of my own. I uh, I'm assuming that that as you evolve the software, that the that it's getting easier to use, right? Because ease of use is a is, is a big issue for uh, for companies with with uh, workforce development issues and so on, right? Would that be a fair guess? Oh yeah, I would like yeah. to. I mean, I as someone who's as someone who's played with the software a little bit, uh, I'd like to interject there. So again, uh, one of the keys to the, uh, the one of the keys to the success and the accuracy of your results is you really have to have good data going in. Um, so the, the, the 3D concept software will generate the patterns off of an SDO. But if your SDO that you import into your software comes out of a native CAD software, whether it's CATIA, whether it's uh, UG, whether it's uh, SolidWorks, whatever it is, if it's got jagged edges and voids and and uh, Ripley surfaces. It's garbage in, garbage out. Garbage in, garbage out. So um, right. the, the answer to the question is the Lecture software is easy to use. However, how you constrain it, 
how you um, parameterize it and how and how good your incoming data is is going to have a huge effect on the results you get yeah. and over the years that's improved dramatically as more more people are coming into the business with better skills right and more and more people are getting that education in school now and not having to depend on getting it on the, in the workforce and in in the software you have to parameterize the the material that you're going to use for your patterns so um, elongation properties etc uh, that data has to be good going in or you're not going to get a fantastic result right it's really really dependent on on the input data Interesting. Yeah, I was, as you say, garbage in, garbage out, right? Excellent. Okay. Exactly. Uh, okay. Uh, I, I'm not seeing any more questions pop up. So, uh, uh, Jim and Graham, if, if, if did you have any final remarks, or, or uh, uh, if, if not, then we'll we'll wrap this thing up and let people get on with their day. What do you think? Sounds good. Yeah. I mean, I'd just like to thank everybody for attending and. Uh, um, for listening to us ramble on. <laughs> yep. Thanks Likewise. a lot. Appreciate it. <laughs> you bet it. Okay. So, um, yeah, thank you everyone for, for taking the time to join us today. Uh, we really appreciate you being here, and we hope that we'll see you back here for future automotive design and production webinars. For more information about our webinars and about our flying magazine, for which I write, please visit the ADNP website at www.adnp.media. Okay, thank you both again, and thank you, everybody. Goodbye. Thanks. Thanks, bye.